Hey folks, welcome to another episode of Life's a Bluff. Today we're lucky enough to be sitting at the 2008 World Series of Poker with the man who came in within a hair's breadth in a battle right to the same final table with uh, Tom Snyder right at the end, Jeff Lissandro. How are you? Doing real well, doing real well. Well folks, you know how random questions work. We're tired of the whole poker scene and everything else. Just want to give Jeff the chance to tell you a little bit about how this year's going, and we'll jump right in. So, how's it going right now? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. I'm in front. Every year I'm in front, I'm happy. That's always a good way to go. Uh, you know, uh, I got one good result. I got a second in the Nodem at uh, Deuce to Seven. Yeah. So I picked up a profit. I'm free rolling with my money. That's always good. I picked good. up a profit. I got my expenses covered. Uh, one more, one more result will make it another good year. So. A lot of people but, say that used to seven rebuy is the ultimate field game to show who's the absolute best live poker player. Do you agree with that? Well, uh, there's a lot of real poker in it. You've got five uh, concealed cards, and you, you don't necessarily need need cards. You just need to be able to come to be imagine a little bit of an imagination. Right. And uh, a few chips to pull off a few plays, and you might win the tournament even without a good hand. Right. Who was your toughest opponent at that final table? Uh, well, toughest opponent. To be honest with you, um, I never had a hand. I had, I had one hand. I had a hand 10% of the time. Um, I felt if my luck was like 30%, I would have. Uh, overrun everyone and won it but um, amazingly I pulled off a series of bluffs and uh, incredible uh, one incredible call which I knew after bluffing uh, Mike like five times in a row I knew that he was going to try to bluff me and I made a, an incredible call uh, he, st he set cat representing a hand uh, before the draw and uh, I just knew that he was so antagonized um, by what I had done to him the five previous hands uh, that he was going to try to bluff me and show the audience and he fell right into the trap and uh, he tried to bluff me and I called him down with uh, an ace which only beats a pair in that game and uh, that put him on tilt, he was completely gone uh, at that stage I had like 80% uh, of the chips but after the break, he just came back and was a human card rack. He picked up uh, like nine very strong hands in a row and just grinded me down. Yeah. So uh, actually, the hardest opponent, I think I had everyone's measure. There was no one really who was keeping up with me. So uh, the, every the player was probably your hardest yeah, opponent. <laughs> yeah, every, every play I made against everyone was working. And I was, I was gradually um, getting a bit of everyone. But I never really had a hand. It was that, that's what I like about the game is that I, you can actually win it without a hand. It's a beautiful thing. How, uh, when your head's up in a, in a game like Deuce to Seven or even short-handed, how do your hand requirements change? Because the, obviously the ace is high. You want Deuce to obviously you know somewhere what? in the Deuce to Seven range, but at eight or nine. In that in that in that particular game, if you've got uh, a ten eight or better, uh, that that hand will play against the full table. Uh, you, you must stand to a pot with that hand. Uh, a pet 10-8 or better virtually is a great hand. It's a, winning, it's a money winning hand. And when we got down to the end, when we were heads up, um, I was doing quite well. I was, I was beating him. We both had no hands. And I was doing really well. I had him down to the felt. And then he just went through a series like in 10 hands he picked up. Uh, a set of uh, uh, pet, pet tens and pet nines, one after the other, and the blinds and endings were so big that he just grinded me down. Right on the end, I mean, the last hand came down to me being virtually even money. Um, I had a nine draw and he had a queen, and uh, I couldn't. Uh, the, f uh, the drawing was always letting me down. I just couldn't finish him off. Uh, every time I had to draw in order to beat him. Uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't make a hand. Well, so, even on the end, when it came down to a showdown, uh, I had a, I was the favourite probably. And um, 
I just couldn't find my card. So. One of your best events, though, coming up in just about a half hour, though. Stud eight or better. Yeah, yeah I, I played all out. I mean, all, all, I think I'm going to do good on the horse this year. All right. I, I play all those games really well, and um, i got a feeling that uh, the horse I'm not just like, You heard it here first, Jeff Lissandro. Big things in the 50K horse. Coming up this week? Yeah. All right. Now we get into the actual meat of this, which is random questions. There okay. we go. Yeah, let's go. And it opens up with this. Do you, when was the last time you sang to yourself? Sang to myself, I sing to myself five times a day. At least. When was the last time you sang to somebody else? Um, probably three times a day. What's the greatest accomplishment in your life? Um, having my daughter. Really? Yeah. I mean, yeah. that, that was a really big day, day in everyone's life. You really think about it. Yeah. You finally just, you know, when you have that child, you wake up one day and you say, now I'm a dad. And uh, it, leaves, uh, it leaves the bracelet for dead. I mean, big deal, a bracelet. You wake up the next day, hey, you're dead. <laughs> you can't beat that, man. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Speaking of that, in 100 years, do you think the world would be a better or worse place? I think it's going to be a worse place. I hate all the government controls they put on people. I hate the way governments, which are run by people who are under scrutiny and control. So if you look at, if you look at what happens really, these politicians and people in, uh, ahead of or leading the political systems around the world, they are under so much scrutiny due to media and all the things that they have to disclose, their personal life their assets, whatever, and I think that they um, say, right, if this is good for us, well, the masses can accept it as well. So gradually, without really knowing about it, we have this situation where the, the world and the common guy is just being put into a system, and everything about him is known, and he has no privacy, everything's got to be recorded, and they can all be used against the little man if the government so needs, needs it to be that way. Uh, a really good example of that is one of the, the worst things that's happened in our recent time was the 9-1-11 case. And government said, um, okay, because of this terrible terrorist act, which it really was, of course, it was the most horrific thing of all time, the human the, hum the uh, general public's rights to privacy uh, have got to be um, adjusted because we want to catch these terrorists and we're going to adjust your privacy rights for a period of time in order to uh, stop them building and being a destructive force to the general public. And because of that, we innocently uh, agreed with the politicians and we signed off that uh, all these new implement, all these implement security laws would have a, um, would be okay because of the, the terrorist situation. But now we see that the governments are using this 9111 extra power which we gave them and signed off to them to get back at us in all little different ways. And one of them was like internet poker. Yeah. They decided that internet poker was not a good thing. So they went and used this security act, which was, you know, supposedly for our protection. And I, I find great offence to that, that they would stoop to using something against the Constitution, which originally was used and signed off on because of the terrorist and security aspect, and they would use that little loophole to attack our little uh, good fun and our little rights that we have. And these are the type of things in the future with all this advanced technology that our privacy and, uh, and what we can do and what they know about us will all, you know, pass away. So I hope that, we do, that society in a hundred years' time can keep the Constitution alive, can keep the Constitution strong, and all our privacy uh, will ma be maintained because really we're only humans because we have privacy. And we have rights and we're all different. And, uh, if we all looked at one little thing that we did, we'd all uh, fall out of uh, favour from the majority. 
So yeah, that's a good way to look that, at it. Yeah, so that's really, really important that governments don't abuse this uh, their, their, their temporary rights that they have. And going on to a, kind of a bigger jump to the next one, would you be willing to murder one innocent to solve world, world hunger? Uh, no. No. Okay. Um, uh, uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a believer in God, and uh, if there was any case for uh, murdering an innocent in order to uh, please the masses or further benefit the masses, uh, God would have let us know in the, in the, in the Bible, and there's no, never a case mentioned, so I'd have to say no. Fair enough. Would you rather play against someone who is less talented than you, more talented than you, or luckier than you? Um, me personally, uh, I like to improve my game. Right. So all my life, uh, coming up through the poker ranks, I've always taken on people, the, the, the best players, and uh, even though I wasn't at their level at that certain time. And uh, my greatest um, disappointment in life is that I travel the world playing poker. And um, I, I, ch I challenged everyone when I didn't know how to play. I challenged all the best players and somehow I became a good player because I challenged the best. But finally when I became at the highest level of poker, uh, people made rules. Jeff, you're, you're too, too good, you're professional, you're not invited to our game. Uh. So, uh, in that point, I, I, I don't really care who I play. Lucky, good, or whatever. Otherwise. Yeah, uh, so I, uh, okay, bye mate. Okay, next Who question. is that? That's the next question. That was Mike Rocco, the guy I put in this tournament. Alright, how's he doing? You know what? Uh, he hasn't got a result for a while, um, but uh, God willing, he might get a result. He really needs it. Maybe he'll pull a, you know, Rocco like in the U.S. Open here. He Maybe the uh, number two. Oh, he came second. Yeah. Maybe we've got a poker Rocco. But, you know, second was a pretty good pay. Yeah. Come on, do it. Let's go. Plenty of good stuff there. If you could be any fictional character, who would you be? Fictional. Fictional. Just, you know, movies, cartoons, literature, you whatever you like. Be James Bond. James Bond. Very there nice. Go, man. International Nothing movies. better than traveling the world, having the best women. And having a little, and it, it looks like every day he has is pretty exciting. It does seem pretty And he always good. escapes. You never see him killed in any films. I'd have to go with James Bond. Yeah, that'll work. That'll work. <laughs> now, speaking of that, if you're a Bond fan, what kind of car do you drive? You know what? I travel the world and I don't drive. Thanks. I always have a driver. But because I'm in uh, 10 different countries a year, um, I guess I never drive. Oh, okay. That's a good one to know. Yeah. All right. When was the last time you yelled at someone? Uh, yelled at someone earlier today. Uh, who was it and why? Um, it was a, a friend of mine and uh, a business uh, associate. And uh, I told him he should be to do something. But uh, because he was so incensed that what uh, he was doing this for my benefit. He went ahead and continued to do it anyway. Who, yeah. Who's this? I uh, don't want to mention names. <laughs> I yell at him three times a day. It's not a big deal. Hello. Um. Okay. Well, uh, I'll meet you at the cage in three minutes. Bye. Three, three. Okay, let's go. All right. If you could have one of the following for a year, which one would you choose? The perfect cook, chauffeur, masseuse, housekeeper, or personal secretary? You know what? I'll take the secretary. I'll tell you why. Because she could do all those jobs <laughs> and, a, and a bit extra. <laughs> oh, man. I may have gotten your business associates in trouble. All right, we're going to jump right to the lightning round for you. In this lightning round, you have to pick one of the two people we're going to say to play heads up for your entire bankroll against their entire bankroll. Let's it is go. the ultimate challenge. What? what game would you choose to play the next? 
Uh, Rez. Raz, who are the four best poker players that you know? Uh, Phil Ivies, Patrick Antonius, um, Doral Brunson, uh, Chip Reese. Right. He's dead, but um, I've always said those four guys were the best. All right. Phil or Patrick? Um, depends what game. In Raz, heads up for your entire bankroll. Who would I want to play? Who would you want to play? Who would you I'd prefer? I'd want to play uh, Patrick. All right. Because I'd want to win. All right. Doyle or if he was a live chip? Um, I'd play Doyle. All right. Santa Claus or the Easter Bunny? Um, Santa Claus. Santa Claus. All right. Pin or Teller? We're at the Rio. You know what? I don't know. None of those two guys. I like the little guy. Just in case we fell out, I could handle it. <laughs> All right, Lance Armstrong or Brett Favre? If Who's you follow that? American football, I just realized that won't go over well. You know what, David Lance? Beckham or Lance Armstrong? I'd go um, Lance Armstrong. All right, Donald Trump or Martha Stewart? Uh, Donald Trump. The Dalai Lama or Charles Manson? Dalai Lama. All right. That's a hard. That's a hard one. Right? That's a tough one. <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger or Sylvester Stallone? I'd go Sylvester Stallone. All right. Your grandmother or your mother? Grandmother. The last question that you have here, OJ or Mike Tyson? You know, I like OJ. I think he got a bad rap. All right. I think um, he was proven innocent. Uh, he didn't go, and now they're trying to get him on some other crime, and they're trying to set him up. And um, I believe in the law. Once, once you've been, once you've been to trial, they've made a decision. They shouldn't try to victimise you in your future life. So you would rather play OJ. I'd rather play OJ. All right. Well, Jeff Lissander, you have survived the lightning round of random questions. Thank you very much. Head to that cage and go win yourself a bracelet. Thank you very much. Bye. Cheers.